Good morning, church family. Good morning online. Um, we just pray you all had a great week and, and that everybody is safe. And um, uh, as we continue, let's uh, stand and worship our Lord Jesus and Father in heaven and, and be a pleasing sound to his ear. to worship is Isaiah 66. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me and where is the place of my rest? For all these things my hand has made and all those things exist, says the Lord, but on this one will I look. On him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. continue to praise God.
As we sing this song, let's um, uh, think about how deep the Father's love is for us. We can't even comprehend it.
I take that back. <laughs> Please stand for the prayer of praise. You guys get a little exercise this morning, you know. <laughs> All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we praise you for this beautiful morning and a special time together with you. Father, we praise you for your son, Jesus, always being present with us and with his arms open wide with endless love and compassion. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father, for heaven and earth and your mighty majesty that we can call on your name and you're always there with us. All glory to you, Father. Amen. Praise you, Jesus, for your obedience to the Father, Amen. to the Father's will, and we will boast in you, your death and your resurrection. Jesus, your wounds have paid my ransom. All honor, glory, and praise in the Amen. wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. And we just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here and to freely just praise you and give you glory. And we just ask, Father, your blessings upon the rest of the service, Father. In the precious name of Jesus, you may be seated. Amen. Good morning, church family. So nice to see so many of you here. Uh, Jonathan Serrano has a very special story he's going to tell us. So he fixed this up and he's going to come down right now, right? Jonathan is up in the sound booth, so you don't see him in front very much, but he's up there helping us have our service go smoothly. And he's the one who also helps us have the service online. So we are very grateful for him. And I also might say, if you were able to park your car here on the upper area, it's Jonathan we have to thank, because as of 5 o'clock yesterday, it was still 8 inches deep. So thank you, Jonathan, so much. Here's your story, and after that, I will bring announcements. Thank you, Linda. Good morning. So I just thought I was sharing with Linda, and, and she got me to come up here and say it. But, um, you know, I was out on um, Friday all day doing, doing work, and uh, I got a call late night to help out someone uh, who needs some help up the driveway, and I went. Along the way, excuse me, I ran down the stairs. Um, so as you all know, the weather was pretty bad and icy and snowy. And so on the way to go help someone else out, um, in the middle of my dinner, when I got the phone call, I um, came across a truck that flagged me down. And it was a, uh, three young ladies who were lost. I told them I couldn't help them this second. I was on my way somewhere, but I gave them my phone number and said, hey, you know, if, uh, in, in a bit, I can help you. Here's the direction. So the, the general store, that's where they were trying to get to first before their cabin. So actually a really long story, but I ended up getting back in contact with them because they had got to an Airbnb but could not pull into the driveway. They had a, you know, two-foot berm. I said, okay, I'll, I'll head up there. So I went up there, cleared their berm, got them in, and they said, hey, by the way, our power's not working. Oh, well, I'm not an electrician, but let's go check the panel, check the GFIs and whatever. And, and they had like half power working, half not working. And, uh, you know, this was about maybe between 9 and 10, maybe 10 o'clock. Um, so the temperatures were dropping. I was way at the top of Zermatt. I'm kind of a chicken with the icy roads. I'm getting better at it. But when it's 20 degrees outside and everything was melting from all morning, um, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to have a long drive home. <laughs> Um, coming down Woodland. So anyway, so I was up there helping them get their fire started because they had no heat. The blower wasn't working on the fire because only half the power was working. The wood, I don't even know if it was seasoned because it just did not want to kick in. Um, every time I closed it, it was trying to go out. So long story short, I was there for a while. We were talking and it turns out um, we were sharing about the church and um, they were sharing that they were there to fellowship. Um, the girls were having a, a girl's time of getaway and fellowship and um, and, you know, I, my wife was texting me that, hey, it's getting icy, it's getting icy, you know, worried, as, of course. And, you know, I, I shared with them, hey, you know, just be careful when you're driving because right now, the, you know, they weren't leaving then, but they were talking about having to get out of there tomorrow and, and so forth. So what I wanted to share, which I thought was really great, and it, it touched my heart and it really, um, you know, was something that, I, yes, I was there, it was late, and it was, you know, I, other place I'd rather be. Um, they shared that they were so thankful that so many people um, – 
besides me had helped them at the general store, borrowing their phone. The neighbor where they were sta staying had let them park there while, until I got up there, uh, let them use their phone. And, and they were sharing how blessed that God had put people in their life at this moment, you know, even on their vacation, um, that they were, you know, th that they were being protected and watched over by God. And before I left, they all gathered around and said, can we pray to make sure you get home safely? And I said, absolutely. You know, but you don't see, you don't hear that a lot, you know. Um, of course, we, I was sharing a little bit, not, you know, not right out front, but little key words like, oh, you know, I do a live stream here and help with the church and, and uh, you know, talking about just the, the, our, my first experience here. So anyways, you know, we were kind of hinting towards each other, and that's when they shared that, oh, well, we're here to fellowship and, you know, thank God and this. And so it was great that at the end I walked out feeling, wow, I was in the right place at the right time, and I love it when God's plan comes together. So. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, welcome, church family. This week, I have a poem for you. I call it the announcement poem. By the way, when we say AC around here, it refers to our activity center. And that's the log building across the parking lot. That's where we have extra meetings and studies. People in town call it the log cabin, but we call it the AC. OK, the announcement poem. We welcome all you who worship here. Your presence with us is very dear. But if you're joining us online, we also think that's mighty fine. How did you like the snow this week? Did you think it really neat? Did staying home make you bored? Or did you drive out and adventures soared? Well, we have some things for you to do. You needn't drive far. It's all free, too. For youth, come to the AC at 5. Tonight, your spirits will come alive. Study Elijah and Luke with Pastor Rick. Plus food and a game. The time goes quick. On Wednesday, there's group studies for women and men. A great time for learning and fellowship then. The women are studying Revelation. Romans 8.28 is the men's occupation. Unless... More snow causes cancellation. And then Wednesday Eve, there's an hour for prayer with Pastor Rick and me. Come join us there. We meet in the library at 5 Wednesday Eve. We'll be glad to include special prayer for your needs. Late Thursday nights, Rick sends out his update. You'll get it by Friday, usually not late. If you already get it, you know the church news the upcoming message, and activity reviews. If you wish to receive it, here's what you should do. Fill out a connection card found in the pew. Or call the church office and just let us know your email address, and it's ready to go. The adult Bible class is studying this, Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. You should not want to miss. Sunday mornings at 9 in the AC. This class is led by Jack McKenzie. Thank you for listening. You attend so well. There's always more stories that I can tell, but these announcements are over. It's now time to pray. Let's talk with the Lord. Then have a great day. Great, thank you, Lenny. You just never know what's going to happen during announcement time. So uh, that's great. So yes, we do want to pray this morning. We want to pray for our church, for our country, and um, we want to pray for one of the missionaries that we support, and we also want to pray for a foreign country. And uh, this morning we've been asked to pray for the country of Tajikistan. And I just want to say a few things about Tajikistan. Tajikistan is... Um, one of the Soviet satellite countries. Uh, they gained their independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. The country re remains the poorest of the former Soviet republics, suffering from corruption and the effects of civil war that ended in 1997. Although 90% of its citizens profess to be Muslim, 
Few regularly practice Islamic rituals. Nearly half the population is under the age of 14. And economic hardships are driving some young Tajiks, that's what they call them, Tajiks. Kind of like the sound of that, don't you? Um, driving some of the uh, young people in Tajikistan toward a more radical form of Islam. Despite accusations by its neighbors, the government denies the presence of Islamist training camps on its soil. Tajikistan has been designated as a country of particular concern by the USCRF since 2012. I want to mention that um, there's a missionary in that country uh, from Bakersfield. And I met with him a couple of years ago. Um, as a church, we considered supporting him and his family. He's married and, and has three kids. And, uh, but at that time, uh, we were not in the position to take on a new um, missionary. So, um, but uh, I did tell him that I would pray for him, which I have been doing. And uh, it would be great for us to pray for him this morning as a church family. His name is um, Joshua Inexon. His wife is Melanie. And uh, as I mentioned, they have um, three. So we want to pray for them. Uh, I, I want to mention that uh, uh, just a little more information about Tajikistan. Religious freedom is guaranteed by the Constitution, but fear of radical Islam. It's, you know, it's still a secular communist country for the most part, even though it broke away from the Soviet Union. Um, but uh, because of the radical Islamic element in that country, it provides the government with an excuse to watch all religious activity. Although there are only about a thousand uh, Christian believers in the country, Christianity continues to grow. The government suppresses and punishes religious activity and imprisons individuals on unproven criminal allegations linked to religious activity. A 2009 religion law uh, created problematic registration requirements for religious groups. So in other words, every religious group, every church had to register with the government. The government refuses to register many groups, usually claiming administrative issues. So there are fellowships and groups of believers that want to be registered and want to be recognized as a church, but the government won't recognize them. By law, religious literature must be approved by the government censors, effectively banning religious materials by unregistered religious groups. It is illegal to teach religion to children under the age of 18. Can you imagine that? Uh, in July 2014, officials from the, Communists, or from the Committee on Religion integrated a worship service. Um, of the International Church and questioned leaders about the church's government registration. At least three similar raids on other churches happened that same month. So uh, we just want to pray for the believers there that uh, they would be encouraged, they would be strengthened, and that the church would continue to grow in that country in spite of the difficulties there. So uh, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together this morning I pray that we would never take our freedom for granted and that we would use the freedom you've given us to share the gospel, to um, reach out uh, to uh, one another and to reach out to those who don't know you. And so, Lord, we pray that uh, your spirit would work in our hearts to trust you, to um, rejoice in all that you've given us and to freely share all that you've given us. And of course, Lord, you've given us your word, you've given us um, this wonderful salvation, and we pray, Lord, that uh, you would use us to help others come to know Christ here in this community and around the world through those missionaries that we support. Lord, we do want to lift up um, uh, Joshua and his wife Melanie as they serve you in Tajikistan. We pray that you would give them wisdom as to how they can um, encourage and strengthen the believers there. We pray that you'd give them wisdom as to how they can share the Word of God and we pray, Lord, that um, you would use them uh, to uh, grow your church in that country. And we pray, Lord, that many would continue to come to know Christ. We pray for, especially for those Muslims that have come to know Christ and pray, Lord, that you would protect them and keep them from uh, retribution from family members and, and this radical uh, Islam that is also surging in that country. And so, Lord, we pray that you would uh, strengthen your people. You would provide them the materials they need. 
We pray you provide them the scriptures they need so that they can continue to learn your word and share your word with others. Lord, we um, lift up our own country and pray that your spirit would work uh, in our leaders. We pray for our president and pray, Lord, that your spirit would work in his heart to turn to you and to trust you. We pray, Lord, that he would look to your word for wisdom as he makes decisions. And we pray that, Lord, not only for him, but for everyone on his cabinet and for those in the Senate and those in the Congress. We also pray, Lord, for our governor and pray, Lord, that uh, you would uh, uh, move his heart to um, see his need for you and that he too, Lord, would look to you and to your word for help and for wisdom. Lord, we pray for a movement of your spirit across our country. We pray that there would be a great turning to you we pray, Lord, that uh, in the midst of the struggles and the difficulties we face as a nation, uh, that we would see our need for you, and we pray that we would turn to you, and we pray, Lord, that your spirit would bring conviction of sin and judgment and righteousness, and that many would turn to the Lord Jesus and put their trust in him for help and for eternal life. Lord, we pray that um, you would so move among the people of this nation that we would turn to you and that we would desire to have Jesus as our king. And although we have a president and a senate and a congress and a supreme court, that we would look to you, Lord Jesus, to lead us and to be our shepherd. Lord, we um, want to lift up uh, those who are serving you in our military, and we lift up um, uh, Adam Snover, who's uh, going through basic training in the Marines. Lord, we lift up uh, Nicholas um, Schreiner, uh, who's serving you in the Air Force in Ohio as he begins a new assignment. Lord, we uh, want to lift up um, Chris Leela to you, who's serving you in the Navy in Japan. And we pray, Lord, uh, that you would bless them, that you would bring fellowship to each one of these um, believers, and that they would grow in Christ as they serve you in the military. And Lord, we pray for all of those who serve in the military, and pray, Lord, that uh, you would use the... Um, the uh, stress of that uh, of their jobs and their positions to cause them to turn to you and call upon you and to follow you in all that they do. Lord, we also want to lift up um, uh, the missionary that uh, we support, Shauna Snow, who serves you in the Netherlands, and we just ask your blessing on her and her kids, and pray, Lord, that you would uh, draw her near to you and that she would experience your grace and direction, and that you would use her, Lord, to help um, uh, many in the Netherlands come to know you and trust you. Lord, we thank you for your mercy towards us. We thank you that uh, you are present with us and not only present with us, but uh, working mightily around the world to build your kingdom. And Lord, we know that as your kingdom grows and as the gospel goes out into all the world, that uh, um, uh, all of these events are bringing us to that wonderful time when you will return. And so, Lord, we thank you that you will soon return and restore this earth and establish your kingdom here. And for this, we give you praise and thanks. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Amen. Now I'm going to ask Ned if he would come and read the scriptures for us this morning. Good morning, church. Let's stand for our scripture reading. Our scripture readings out of Philippians 1. 1 through 11, this letter is from Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus. It is written to all of God's people in Philippi who believe in Christ Jesus and to the elders and deacons. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. I always pray for you, and I make my requests with a heart full of joy because you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I'm sure that God, who began the work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on that day when Christ Jesus comes back again. It is right that I should feel as I do about all of you, for you have a very special place in my heart. We have shared together the blessings of God, both when I was in prison and when I was out, defending the truth and telling others the good news. 
God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. I pray that your love for each other will overflow more and more and that you'll keep on growing in your knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until Christ returns. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, those good things that are produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. And this is the word of our Lord. so blessed and I'm sure all of you do too for the freedom we have in this country when you think about all these countries Pastor Rick prays for the, the turmoil and, 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 and strife that these people have to go through and the danger that they're all involved in and here we have such freedom uh, to, to share and to, to worship uh, our Lord and it just makes me feel that we we need to do so much more because we have that freedom uh, to, to share and to grow and, and hopefully that will just branch out into the rest of the world. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we come to you right now with obedient and open hearts. Have your way with us. 
Give each of us wisdom and grace as Pastor Rick shares your word with us. And bless Pastor Rick as he comes now. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. It's always great to gather together to sing, to worship, to pray, and to hear the Word of God. And this morning we're going to look at and talk about three of the most helpful commands in Scripture. And by the way, did you know that all of God's commands are helpful? There are a lot of commands in the Bible. Actually, there's over a hundred. And every one of them is designed to make us happy and healthy. Every command in the Bible comes from the one who made us, the one who loves us, and the one who wants us to enjoy life to the fullest. Now, here's the first command we're going to look at this morning. It's from James chapter 1, verse 19, and it says, Let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. You know, if we just obeyed that wonderful command, I'm sure we'd understand the Bible much better. We'd greatly improve our relationships with our families and friends, and we'd get along much better with our enemies. Or I should say, we would greatly improve our relationships with those who disagree with us. When we talk too much and listen too little, we shut others out. And when we listen too little to God, we place ourselves in danger of missing out on His blessings. But if we thank God for this wonderful command and obey it by being quick to listen to God, God will bless us in everything that we do. So here's the second command we're going to look, to, look at this morning. It's James chapter 1, verse 21. It says, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent. Now just think about how great our lives would be if we could rid our lives and our minds of all moral filth. Think of how great our lives would be if we could rid our lives and our minds of the evil that is so prevalent around us. How wonderful it would be to have a pure heart and a clear mind. It is possible. God wouldn't command us to do it if it wasn't possible. Of course, we'll need God's help ridding our life and mind of moral filth and evil. We need God's help to do every command He gives us. And that's why He gives us the Holy Spirit, to help us and empower us to obey His wonderful commands. Now the third command is also in verse 21 of James chapter 1, and it says this, Humbly accept the word implanted in you, which is able to save your soul. Again, think how wonderful it would be to have God's word richly dwell within us. If God's word is implanted in us, if it's on our minds, we'll have God's wisdom in every situation. We, we will be solid in knowing the truth about God, the truth about ourselves, and the truth about the events around us. We would be able to live without fear, confident in God's love and care for us in every situation. Now I'm emphasizing the fact that every command of God is wonderful and helpful because I know that we Americans have a hard time with commands. Generally, we don't like being told what to do. So, I want, before we get into the body of our passage this morning, to think about how should we view God's commands? How should we view the Word of God? Now, before we read the James passage, I'd like to look at Psalm 119 as kind of a part of our introduction. And I'd like for us to look at it together. Um, it's a long psalm. In fact, it's the longest psalm in the book of Psalms. And not only is it the longest psalm in the book of Psalms, 
but it is the longest chapter in the entire Bible. Um, it's going to take me about 18 to 20 minutes to read it. Um, so our, the sermon might be a little longer this morning than usual. Now, we're not sure who wrote Psalm 119. Some suggest King David. Some suggest Daniel, the prophet. Some suggest Ezra. The author of this psalm, whoever it was, obviously wrote it during a time of difficulty and persecution because he makes reference to his trouble throughout the psalm. Now, this is an acrostic psalm. It has 22 sections, and each section has eight lines. And all eight lines of the first section begin with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And in the second section, each line begins with the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And so each section continues with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet until all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet have been used. So if you can read Hebrew, you look at this psalm and you, know, you see you know, every line beginning with the same letter. It's a, it's a work of art. The author didn't want to use the word scripture over and over again, so there are eight words in this psalm that refer to God's word. And here are these eight words that refer to God's word. The law, testimonies, precepts, statues, commandments, judgments, the word, and ordinances. All of those terms refer to God's word in this psalm. So um, I hope you, as you listen to this psalm, that you'll catch the attitude that the writer has. And I hope that you'll inspire to realize that God's word is indeed wonderful. It is indeed helpful. And his commandments are our greatest treasure. So I'm going to turn to Psalm 119 now. And if you're here, um, I would be great for you to read along as I read it. And I would suggest that you turn to the Bible that is in the rack. Uh, it looks like this. And we call it the Rack Bible because it's in the rack. And you'll, uh, because I'm going to be reading the New International Version, uh, it would be, you know, great if you would read the same translation uh, as, I read, um, the, uh, as I read the psalm. So you'll find Psalm 119 on page 436. If you are watching at home and you have a New International Translation of the Bible, please go get it and read along as I read this very long psalm. You'll notice at the beginning of the psalm, there's the word aleph, and that's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So here's Psalm 119. Please listen or follow along, follow along if you have the New International Version. Blessed are those, excuse me, I start off. Uh, Blessed are they whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do nothing wrong. They walk in his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. How can a young man keep his way pure? by living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. 
I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Do good to your servant, and I will live. I will obey your word. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. I am a stranger on earth. Do not hide your commands from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times. You rebuke the arrogant who are cursed and who stray from your commands. Remove from me scorn and contempt, for I keep your statues. Though rulers sit together and slander me, your servant will meditate on your decrees. Your statues are my delight. They are my counselors. I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life according to your word. I recounted my ways and you answered me. Teach me your decrees. Let me understand the teaching of your precepts. Then I will meditate on your wonders. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Keep me from deceitful ways. Be gracious to me through your law. I have chosen the way of truth. I have set my heart on your laws. I hold fast to your statues, O Lord. Do not let me be put to shame. I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. Then I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statues and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread, for your laws are good. How I long for your precepts. Preserve my life in your righteousness. Make your unfailing love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I will answer the one who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Do not snatch the word of truth from my mouth, for I have put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law forever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. I will speak of your statues before kings and will not be put to shame. For I delight in your commands because I love them. I lift up my hands to your commands, which I love, and I meditate on your decrees. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. My comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. The arrogant mock me without restraint, but I do not turn from your law. I remember your ancient laws, O Lord, and I find comfort in them. Indignation grips me because of the wicked who have forsaken your law. Your decrees are the theme of my song wherever I lodge. In the night I remember your name, O Lord, and I will keep your law. This has been my practice. I obey your precepts. You are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statues. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Though the wicked Bind me with ropes, I will not forget your law. At midnight, I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. The earth is filled with your love, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. Do good to your servant 
according to your word, O Lord. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I believe in your commands. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Their hearts are caught callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted, so that I might learn your decrees. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. May those who fear you rejoice when they see me, for I have put my hope in your word. I know, O Lord, that your laws are righteous, and in faithfulness you have afflicted me. May your unfailing love be my comfort, according to your promise to your servant. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. May the arrogant be put to shame for wronging me without cause, but I will meditate on your precepts. May those who fear you turn to me, those who understand your statues. May my, may my heart be blameless toward your degrees, that I may not be put to shame. My soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my hope in your word. My eyes fail looking to your promise. I say, when will you comfort me? Though I am like a wineskin in the smoke, I do not forget your decrees. How long must your servant wait? When will you punish my persecutors? The arrogant dig pitfalls for me contrary to your law. All your commands are trustworthy. Help me, for men persecute me without cause. They almost wiped me from the earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. Preserve my life according to your love, and I will obey the statues of your mouth. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. Your law has, if your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Save me, for I am yours. I have sought out your precepts. The wicked are waiting to destroy me, but I will ponder your statues. To all perfection I see a limit, but your commands are boundless. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statues. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path, so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much 